Welcome to another Monument Monday. And this week we're joined by Malcolm Young, who's the chaplain here at St. Columbus Church of Ireland in Drumcliff. And he's going to talk to us about these wonderful pieces of high cross that are embedded in the walls here in the church. Hello, you're very welcome here to Drumcliff Church. This is St. Columbus Church. It's a Church of Ireland church. It's on the site of an ancient monastery founded here in the 500s by St. Columba himself. There's a lot of wonderful architecture incorporated in this church, even though this church was built in 1809. The elements of this church have been recycled from an old abbey that was here. And one of the points of interest that probably proves that, that point more than any is this stone here that you can see. It's elaborately carved. We have a, we have a niche here. And it's, it's believed that this this is a portion of the shaft, the, the vertical piece of an old ancient high cross. Now, uh, if, you, if you come here sometime for yourself, you'll probably be able to see here that there's very ornate, very intricate carvings along the lines of, of the old Celtic knotwork. And as you may or may not know, the Celtic knotwork was borrowed, let's say, by the, by the, the Celtic Christian Church from the days of the Druids. And it was incorporated as a sign of the eternal nature of God because Celtic knots have no beginning or no end so that describes in a, in a, in a very a very understandable way the eternal nature of God. Now if you see here some people have said this niche there's different theories about what that may be some people say it may be something that was maybe added later as the stone was adapted for other use some people think it may be part of part of the, the structure of the high cross as maybe a, as maybe a tenon for a mortise joint, a mortise and tenon joint as it was constructed. But another theory has come to light, as I said, about the Celtic designs that they were, they were adapted from the, the days of the Druids. The Druids also had a great belief in, in the tree spirits. You'll maybe hear that today. Of, you'll see carvings of the old man of the woods and the tree spirits with the, the long beard and the long hair. One of the practices the Druids had, if they had a sacred tree that they considered sacred, if there was a hollow in that tree, they would have brought offerings to the tree spirits and placed them inside the hollow of the tree. One of the theories is that the, the monks here adapted that practice and these holes were actually for people to come and bring a small offering to God, maybe a, a handful of barley or a cup of wine, as you can see, it just a hand just fits in there nicely. As time progressed, these holes became places to keep religious relics, such as a holy item or maybe a bone of a, of a revered saint. And over the years, these holes became smaller and smaller and eventually fell into disuse. And, 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 and more recent crosses wouldn't have this hole on the side of them. So that's this stone. This stone is considered a national monument because of its historical interest in its historical value and it was actually covered it was covered with plaster work until the late 1990s whenever this this wall they were going to renovate the wall they, they, they chipped off the old line plaster that was in disrepair and they discovered this these this beautiful stonework a lot of it has been weathered it's obviously mm -hmm. recycled from other places from other buildings on the site which was quite probably the abbey. The abbey would have been constructed of stone. There's some sandstone there. That's the red, that's the, the carboniferous limestone that's natural to this part of Sligo. Mm -hmm. But as you can see, the cross is also made of this sandstone, which they believe may have been important for this specific use. Brilliant. And there's another. Yes, would, would, there's another. There's another segment. As well. If yeah. you'd like to come and see Absolutely. this, please come along here into our porch. If you'd like to come here, and I'll close the door. And as you can see, here's another fragment oh, wonderful. of carved stone. Yes, yeah, just hidden behind the door. Now we believe that may that's quite possibly from the same cross, but a different section of the cross. As you yeah. can see, it's slightly narrower. So that may have been from the cross beam, the, 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 the horizontal part of the cross. And the other section is from the shaft? The shaft, the vertical okay. part, yes, it is indeed. 
And the, the design is very similar again. The, the design is similar. The, 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 the stylized version of the Celtic knotwork is, is almost identical to what we have in the other, in the other portion. So we do believe that that's a fragment of the same cross. Both parts were, were, were found during the construction of this building and were incorporated into the walls. In those days, I don't think they realised the value of what they'd found, so it was just incorporated into the walls as part of the structure of the church. Brilliant. And there's a very fine high cross here in the graveyard, and um, that is said to date to the 11th century. Yes. And the carving, the interlace detail mm -hmm. on that is as fine as this, and mm -hmm. uh, very lucky to have possibly a second one here in the walls. Um, yes. There's other features too, Malcolm, in the porch here. There are other features, yes. Here's uh, one of two headstones, gravestones that we have. As you can see, they're also inter very interesting, the, the, the carving that we have on them. This is probably, we think, represents the tree of life from the yeah. Bible. And these are various animals and symbols Brilliant. from the Bible. It's also carved from the local limestone. This, dark carboniferous limestone. This, this one here is um, early, early 18th century? It, early 18th century yeah. and, and it's it's interesting when people come, especially our younger visitors, they come and they try to read this very stylized writing yeah. that's actually spelt in, in the medieval style with the V's instead of U's and the Y's instead of I's. So, mm -hmm. so great fun's had by yeah. all that come and try and <laughs> I have another one just over and there's here. There's another one. Sadly, it's in behind a bench, but I think that's, in a way, it's a good thing because it preserves preserves what we have. Now, the the names are changed, but the letters are exactly the same here. Lies waiting for the resurrection. So I love to tell people it's the oldest example we have of copy and paste. So I just want to take the opportunity to thank Malcolm um, for showing us around the church today and exploring some of the really interesting features hidden in the walls here. Thank you very much, Malcolm. Thank you so much, Tamlin, and it was a pleasure to speak to you. And with, hopefully when all this pandemic is over, you can come and see these things for yourself. So God bless you and take care.